I'm Solar Wind Tech Geek, Crystal Taylor, and today I'm really excited to have this presentation about what you can do with custom properties. Now, previously in this slide camp, we did a primer on custom properties. So if any of this is new to you, please go check that out. And there's lots of documentation on custom properties and the THWAT community is rife with suggestions for things you can do with your custom properties. And today we have Mark Netterfield on, who's a THWAC MVP, and you've seen him around the forums as Mesverum. He's very, very capable, and he's full of ideas for the SDK and the API and just everywhere in the Orion platform, anything to make his job easier. Um, so welcome, Mark. Thanks, Crystal. You guys had asked me to come on here and talk about some of the more advanced use cases that I've run into relating to custom properties. So I'm gonna run through two examples that came to mind. The first one is a way of using properties to opt out of alerts. It's easy to implement, but it can have powerful results for managing your alerts. And the second one is a little bit more elaborate. It's gonna go through a method of automatically testing templates against new nodes when they get added. And then based on the results of those tests, it'll automatically set custom properties and ensure that the correct SAM templates are always applied in the future without you having to remember and go assign them every time uh, when you get new nodes added. Awesome, that sounds really interesting and very exciting. So let's get the easy one out of the way first. This is an example of how to make it so you can have servers opt out of an alerts without having to worry too much about it on your admin side. As you go through the learning process of getting your monitoring set up, you'll find that initially most people start out where they have simple standard alerts and you apply those across the board. Soon afterward, you start to see edge cases and you start modifying the rules to exempt particular host names or systems with different kinds of machine types or whatever kind of logic ends up getting made. For example, let's say you have a subset of your servers that are part of an auto scaling cluster and they get powered on and off automatically. So their admins tell you that they don't want to get node down alerts for those nodes anymore. You go in there and you edit your alert definition to exempt this set of servers based on their naming convention. And then later on, you have to come in and do a different set of exemptions. And then later on, another one comes in. And after time, these lists can get really out of control in a large environment. A few years from now, no one will even remember if those hosts are being monitored. Potentially a simpler way to handle all of your exceptions instead of editing the alert logic itself is to create a custom property. We'll call this one alert management. Essentially, it's just a text property that you factor into all of your alert logic. So if you have a node that needs to be exempted from node down alerts, you just add down to the alert management property and the node down alerts decide to ignore that particular node. It's like muting, but for specific individual alerts. You can see here where we just add the condition to the alert where the node property called alert management is empty or it does not contain the word down. Here's another example to exempt nodes from a CPU alert. And here you can see an example of how to do an interface bandwidth exception. You can also string together as many exceptions as you needed into a single property. So I could potentially do something like node, memory, and bandwidth all in one big string and then exempt from all three different alerts. I've seen where people will create different true-false custom properties for each alert, but that can get really messy looking when you have a large environment with lots of different alert conditions. As an extreme example, in the place where I'm just recently started working, we had more than 90 custom properties that regulated alert logic, and I'm trying to simplify that. Awesome, I really, really love this. Um, it simplifies automation of a simple task. It keeps your alerts down to a minimum, so you're not worried about managing hundreds and hundreds of alerts. I mean, there's hundreds of out-of-the-box alerts alone, so if that's all you've got going for you, you definitely need some way of managing that and tuning out some of that noise. So this is a really great way to do that. Exactly, I think it makes it just a lot easier for people to understand what they are and aren't getting alerted on because they can just look at the custom property and see everything except for node down alerts is on this server. Yes, yeah, the more complicated it is, the less likely someone later on is to come and make changes that's gonna affect that thing. So the second example always stuck out in my memory as being an interesting scenario that I ran into while I was consulting. This one is a little bit more involved though. I had a client who had an agent on their servers with some log files that they wanted to monitor, but it needed to be across the entire environment. The problem they were running into is the software had been bought out by another company at some point. So depending on when you installed it, the process name would be different and the file paths would be different. And so setting up the correct SAM template was a real headache. There wasn't a good way to know ahead of time which processes were gonna be installed on which server. So I couldn't go off of the server naming conventions or anything like that. Uh, we just had to try to guess and check as different servers got added in, which was very tedious. 
The solution that we ended up building was a scheme using custom properties, alert actions, and dynamic groups to set up a system that automatically checks every node to figure out which template should be assigned to that node. And then it continues to take care of it for us automatically with no future admin effort required. Um, I love that. Anything that requires less work in the future might be a little more complicated up front, but it kind of keeps house on its own. That keeps you from having to constantly maintain something and it makes it makes future work minimal. Exactly. That's what I'm interested in. If I can do it up front and then never have to think about it again, then it's just gone from my memory. <laughs> I'm going to walk you through an example that's similar to that scenario that I described, but I don't have that particular program in my environment. So I thought I would go with an example that we should all be relatively familiar with based on our Orion servers themselves. In my system, I have polling engines, additional web servers, and a SQL database that I need to set different templates on. And so we'll set up this scheme to map the correct template to the servers automatically. As with almost everything in the Orion platform, there's probably other ways that we could accomplish this, but I like this method because it didn't require any custom SQL, there's no scripting, no interactions with the API, and yet it's still automated away at chore. Yeah, and I'm sure everyone would love to know that. <laughs> any ways that you can do it without scripting is happy. So we're gonna start the second example with creating a new custom property again. This one is going to be a node property, and we're going to call it sorting. After we create the custom property, we're going to need to create a set of groups. So we go to manage groups, and in my case, I'm going to start out with one group called sorting groups. This one is just kind of a bucket to put everything else in so that we can keep them all together. In the first group, we add a dynamic query that looks for any nodes where the sorting custom property is equal to TBD. After that, I'm going to add in three child groups inside of this, one for each server role of the collector, the database, or an IIS server. Each of the child groups, the query is looking for nodes where the sorting custom property is set to match the group name. So in IIS group, we're looking for sorting to equal IIS. And in the collector group, sorting will equal collector, and database, sorting will equal database. Pretty straightforward. Next, we'll use the SAM assigned a group feature to automatically have the templates assigned where we need them. You can see here in the screenshot, I have a template for each server role. So we've got our database template, the IIS template, and the one that I use for my collector servers. To make the system work, all three templates are gonna need to be assigned to both groups, the sorting group and then the correct child group. Why is that? So initially, when a new server gets added in, we're going to get it put into that sorting group, and it's going to get all three templates assigned. And then based on whichever template goes up and has a, the correct process is running, then a different alert is going to trigger off that sets a custom property that says, you know, this one has SQL services running, so it must be a database server. And that's how it's going to move them out of the sorting group and into the appropriate child group. In this screenshot, you can see I assigned the database template to both the sorting group and the database group, like I just said. I repeat that process two more times for the IAS and the collector servers to be assigned to their groups and still the generic sorting group. To recap, any node with TBD in the sorting property is going to go into the parent group and have all three templates assigned to them. If they have IIS, database, or collector inside of their custom property, then they're going to get moved into the child group and they'll only have the specific template that matches the server get assigned to them again. So the last piece to make this all come together is that we want to set up some alert actions that will automatically move new nodes through the various groups, test out all the templates on them, and tag the property as needed. Dynamic queries don't currently allow for us to select objects with a null value. So to kick everything off, we have to set up an action where any node that doesn't have anything for the sorting group is going to get TBD set into it. So. Our first alert will look for the nodes and check their main app and make sure that that says SolarWinds Orion. And then it has the sorting property set to empty. Empty or null would be the default when you add a new node. We can leave the reset condition as the default, reset when it's no longer true. And for our action, we're gonna change a custom property. Select the sorting custom property and set it to equals TBD. Because of the automatic SAM template assignment that we set up in the previous section, we're going to know that this will assign all three templates to the node after the action fires. Our next step is another alert that figures out if a node can be moved from the TBD sorting group and into the correct group. For in this case, we'll use database. To save myself some clicks, I'm just going to copy the alert I created for my first one and then use that as my starting point. 
I just changed the name a bit. So instead of saying sorting equals TBD, I'm going to go sorting to database. Pay attention that the target of this particular alert is an application because we're checking to see if the application is equal to this process example database and that it's up. So that will let us know that the SQL Server process is running on this particular server. We'll remove the action that got copied over from our original alert and create a new action that changes the custom property again. This time, since the target of the alert is an application, you get an option where you can pick if you want to change a property on the app itself or on the parent node. For this, I'm going to choose the sorting property from the parent and set it to database. After I get that database alert set up, I'll just copy that and edit it two more times for the IIS and the collector templates. By the time I'm done setting all of this up, the alerts had already fired and gone through the database and IIS templates and set up their whole sequence of events. So I couldn't grab screenshots of that as it happened, but you can see the end results here in this screenshot. My first rule got all my nodes where sorting was empty and set it to TBD, which puts them in the main sorting group. Then that got all three templates assigned to the node. As soon as one of those templates shows as being up, then it triggers the second alert, which switches the custom property for sorting to match whichever template came up. You can see in this snippet from my event history that the templates were assigned and removed based on how the different tests went, and it was entirely automatic. It was done before I was done editing the third set of alerts, so you know that it goes quickly and you never have to think about it again when you add a new node. That's that's awesome. And for for anyone that forgot what the original example was, since the example we used was Orion servers, um, I think the original example is super useful because it definitely happens for a lot of software that's been you know taken over by somebody else, and then the files change. I mean, even just in SolarWinds software itself, you've seen some file changes that were you know maybe in an acquisition like SEM originally. Lem was an acquisition from Trigeo. So being that it was an acquisition, there's still files out there that are titled as Trigeo. So depending on what version you're on, you may not have the right file names and things like that. So it definitely makes sense to have something like this where it can do that for you automatically. And you don't have to go individually and look for those servers, especially um, it sounds like it was quite a few servers for the original example. Um, so it definitely makes a lot of sense to kind of set something up that's quick and you never have to worry about it again. Thank you so much for showing us these innovative ideas for using your custom properties to make being an Orion admin easier, really, because I feel like that's what they were about. Um, so I definitely appreciate that you showcase many different built-in parts of the product. You um, showcase groups and dynamic queries and uh, the things you can do with your alerts and applications. And it's very much a lot of things that were involved there, but it definitely showcased a lot of things you can do naturally in the product that don't require scripting and don't require the SDK and don't require the API or any of that stuff. And I think that's phenomenal to showcase kind of what you can do, how powerful the product is for an Orion admin if you just use a little bit of imagination. Um, so uh, thank you again so much for doing that. And if anyone has any questions about custom properties and how they work, I did do a primer earlier on this Slack camp called Custom Properties Revisited. So if you did want to check that out, you can do that. There's also lots of documentation and there's lots of things out on the Thwack forums that people have shared their innovative ideas for custom properties. And please share your innovative ideas for custom properties because making this job easier is what everyone looks forward to. So thanks again, Mark, for joining me and showcasing all of this for our viewers. No, thank you, Crystal. It was fun.